Welcome to the healing bench. So what we got here, friends, is a slice magnum plus. And uh, we are going to rebuild this. I put all the parts in my hand here so you can kind of see what we're looking at. There we go. This is the heat block. And it was all gunky and I cleaned it up too much, but that's my fault. Um, this is the heat sink. This is a nozzle cover. This is the uh, heat brake that came with it. This was a beta model that uh, was given to me or sent to me for review and feedback from Slice themselves. And when I uh, got a jam in it, which was my fault, not not the hot end's fault, I had a jam. Um, I had to pull the little standoffs out to get it apart. And uh, this is what happened. So the jam was stuck up here in the heat break. And uh, there you go. It is cleared. I don't know if I can show you this or not, but it is cleared. Um, I don't know if this is good or not. This is a, a standard mosquito heat break. So, um, or a magnum, or a mosquito heat break, excuse me. Um, I called uh, Slice and at, told them uh, my predicament. And seeing how these are not offered on the internet yet uh, for sale, um, ask them what could be done. They sent me this, and from what I can tell, this just says a regular uh, 1.75 filament mosquito uh, heat break. So we're going to put that in there. And then also, uh, this is something else that's not sold yet, but this is the Hot Block uh, hardware kit. And I have lots of these uh, for the other Mosquito Magnum setup but I don't have this for the plus. And the only thing that's different are these screws. These two long screws and those little tiny washers, you can kind of see them right here. But these long screws are the ones that hold the block and the uh, heat break. So they'll hold this together. And they go right there in the center. And they basically pull the block they basically pull these two pieces uh, together. These are different than the standard um, sliced mosquito heat break, or I mean uh, heat sink, excuse me. So this is 24.92. That is the same. This is where the difference is. So this is 14.8 uh, across. 12.91, 25 again. So again, this this width this way is the same. This is a little bit uh, smaller on a mosquito for whatever reason. This is also a magnum heat break sink or heat sink same thing. So they both take the 25 millimeter standard uh, fan. But today we are going to be the first to uh, rebuild one of these bad boys and. Uh, Ignore this. Um, I got a little happy with the Dremel. Um, this did get globbed up a few times, and I put mm, hundreds, uh, hundreds of hours on this uh, little piece here. And uh, as a full unit, they ship it to me as an assembly, um, and uh, I put tons and tons and tons of hours on it. So this is uh, the the one of the things the unique features of this is, is it allows for dual 50 uh, watt heaters that sit right alongside the, the filament path there. These can be used for um, uh, thermistors. So you can have two thermistors. You can have one on either side. And then these other holes are basically just little screw holes that hold in the thermistor and hold in the uh, heater. Uh, this was the one that holds in the heater. This one is a thermistor. This right here is a threaded one. So here's where the standoff post go that goes into the heat break. Um, another standoff post that goes in the heat break. Thermistor. And then a screw to hold the thermistor in. So yeah. So 
screw to hold the heaters in, standoff, standoff, thermistor, screw to hold the thermistor in. So you could theoretically put a redundant system here. You could put a thermistor here and here. And you could have two heaters, two thermistors. I don't, the, the only point to the, to the thermistor redundancy would be for redundancy sake. Um, I guess if you really wanted to know what the temperature was on either side of the block, I don't know. The way I had it set up is I had the heaters in the front and I had one thermistor in the back. So, um, yeah. And then on the bottom here, obviously this is where the two heaters stick out. If they do, you know, uh, the sliced heaters stick out. This is where the thermistor sticks out. Um, this is where the nozzle goes, obviously. And then this piece that is the uh, nozzle shield piece. Pretty. This is actually a pretty cool little piece. So this eliminates the need for a uh, heater block or a heater sock, if you will, a block sock uh, to prevent the fan from cooling the nozzle off. Um, this also keeps the nozzle relatively clean and it also keeps the, the wind, the air right off the top of the block. So anyways, yeah, so we're going to put this together today. Um, I have another video on my channel that um, shows you how to rebuild a Magnum. And uh, I think we're going to be the first ones to do a Magnum Plus. This is a beta unit, obviously. That's why there's no markings on it. There's no coating on this one um, like you would typically see on a Mosquito product. All right. Let's go. So we're gonna need uh, some thermal paste. We are going to need a new uh, thermistor. And we're gonna need a new heater cartridge. And the reason I say that we need a heater cartridge um, is because when you put this together, you, you kind of have to decide if you're gonna do one heater or two. And you're going to have to decide, you know, basically what, what, what electronic components you're going to put in this uh, hot block. The reason is the heat, or the heat block. And the reason is, is because once you have this whole sandwich together, the thing that differs on this versus other hot ends is you're going to have to, you have to basically insert your heater and your thermistor before you pull the whole assembly together. Um, now, again, this is a beta unit. This could have changed. I don't know. Um, but just like a lot of like the E3D stuff, you have to, this sits vertically in the block. So we're going to have to decide, you know, are we going to put what, what heater are we going to put in there, et cetera. So I think on this, okay. So you can see, I just put a little bit of a dab on there. You don't want to put too much on there because you don't want it down in the filament path. You only want it on the threads that are going to be actually touching uh, on the heat on the heat block itself. So, um, I'm going to thread this in there and then, uh, in there. uh, I did put a little thermal paste on there and I just walk it in about a quarter and then back it off a quarter. Keep in mind that these are copper surfaces and, uh, these are very, very soft metals. So I just, I thread it in a quarter of a turn, back it off a quarter of a turn, thread it in half a turn, back it off a quarter of a turn and all the way until it finally seats into the bottom there. And that is in there properly. So next, now we are going to put in our standoffs. And then we will put in the heater. Then we'll put in the thermistor. And then we will stick the screws through the bottom. And we will button this thing up. Okay. So now we got all four of the standoffs in. And listen, when you rebuild this, um, the first time you take this apart, no problem. Once it's had some use on it and gets gunk everywhere, getting these standoffs in cleanly is an art unto itself. So I'm going to show you what I do. Um, you know, you use your own method, but I basically take the standoff that's stuck and I put it against here and I gently push soft, 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 soft. If need be, I will give it a couple little love taps, but I measure this. These are all 8.84 millimeters sticking out of the block. Now, I don't know if that's to spec or not, but that is as far as I can get them to go in safely without bending them. Once these are compromised, they will fold like a paper sack. If you push straight on them, they're very, very strong. The minute you get a little dent, a little bend, a kink, anything, 
these will fold like a paper bag. And uh, it's very important that you don't bend them. All right, next step is to put uh, this guy on. But first, we gotta put our heater and our thermistor in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this on real quick and do a little test fit um, before we put the, the heater and the thermistor in just to make sure that all these are lined up properly. All right, so I checked it. We are good, it slides on there beautifully. So next step is to put a heater in it and we are gonna put in a 50 watt slice heater. Um, I am going to put a little goo on it, um, and then I'm going to put in the block. One thing I wanted to mention is orientation. So when I mounted this in the rail core, there was no uh, markings on this. So I wasn't sure how to mount it. Um, just like all Mosquito products, I guess you could mount it either way. Uh, I've been told since that this is the face of it. And if you look in the product logos, this is where the logo is. So this is obviously the side they want uh, pointed out. So it's supposed to sit like this on the printer. Um, so if you're gonna do one heater, like I'm going to, um, I guess you put the heater on this side and the thermistor on this side. So just think about that, um, which way you want the thermistor to go. So the thermistor goes right here. So, all right. Okay, so we have all of our standoffs in, we have our heat break in, we have our thermistor and our heater in, and we also have the retaining screw on both. Now, I, I mentioned earlier, I'm only gonna put one um, of these in, and the reason is, is because I just broke one and I don't have a spare, so I only have one of each. So, anywho. I'm gonna go ahead and put the other retaining screw in here so I don't lose it. Um, and if and when I ever decide to add another one here, I will, uh, yeah, I will just slide it right in there. So anyways, this is all ready to go. So now next step is we're gonna put the heat sink on, that heat sink on, and we're gonna use those two long uh, screws and washers to secure it from the bottom. Note that I do have, um, plenty of uh, thermal paste in there, and it is important to let that dry and not keep moving it around. But yeah, pretty critical for good adhesion and good thermal conductivity from the heater or the thermistor to the block or heater to the block and the block to the thermistor. So anyways, uh, next step, we're gonna slide that heat sink over the top and secure through the screws through the bottom, just like a standard. And there we go. The ugliest <laughs> copper uh, or slice uh, Magnum Plus in history. Um, but anyways, it's together. The uh, mounting screws are in there. The lock washers are in there. So it should not be backing out anytime soon. I do, um, these these uh, screws right here, um, you can barely see them, but those are the screws that hold the, the heat sink to the block. Now, once it's hot, I go back, I put the bed down or whatever, get myself enough room and I take a Allen wrench and I go up in there and I snug those up a little bit. They do have a tendency to be tight when cold and then once they get hot, they start to get a little sloppier. But uh, anyways, um, I don't think that's necessary. Uh, and anyways, yeah, there we go. So what's left here is we gotta put the nozzle on this. So I'm gonna do that next. And once the nozzle's on there, then we will take um, the uh, nozzle guard and we'll put that back on there. So. Here we go, all done. So some things you're gonna notice different uh, from the production model to this, obviously this, this block is not, uh, this is a beta block. Um, and I think they were still working out some fitment issues with this nozzle um, cover. Mine had like little plastic, uh, high temp plastic pieces in there. Um, you can see that um, I have put some just little uh, three mil M3 washers in there to replace the plastic. Um, they also had a flush mount um, Allen head, which I see in the final renders or pictures uh, is still there. Um, I my Some of my feedback was to go to just this because getting that little tiny screw out, the flush mount one is near impossible. Um, this does have the vanadium uh, one millimeter slice nozzle on it. Um, it has a slice 50 watt heater, and this is a generic um, E3D style 
thermistor because I don't plan on doing 300 plus degrees on this. Um, but for high flow capacity, there is no better hot end on the market. When you have two heaters in this thing, your printer cannot print it fast enough. That's just, that just is what it is. Uh, this, this hot end produces plastic faster than your printer can handle it. Even these 400 millimeter guys, I would say this is on, this is easily on par, if not far above, even like a uh, Nova hot end that is still a very good hot end for a single heater hot end. But when you have dual heaters like this, uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, and you can build a little Y adapter. Um, that's what Slice suggested to doing was building a Y adapter to hook these two heaters together. And then you run them off of one, one uh, uh, heater port off the board. Um, you can also heat them individually, uh, which, you know, is, is a good way to do it. But the duet, at least on a duet board, uh, my understanding is there's plenty of, uh, it's, it's plenty capable of handling two of these heaters at once. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So the, this is a total rebuild of the Slice Magnum Plus. Um, that I believe is yet to be sold yet. Um, very unique hot end, uh, high flow hot end. Um, this is longer than a standard uh, Mosquito, but still very compact. Um, still has the same mounting style, same uh, fan, same uh, heat break. You know, pretty much the same standoffs, I believe. Um, the only difference is obviously the block and uh, the hardware that pulls the block and the heat sink together. And then obviously there's this unique design with this uh, nozzle cover that basically keeps the wind away from the, uh, the, the nozzle and lets you retain the heat in the nozzle better. Um, and I love this. One other little side note here is this hot end with, I mean not, let me say, with this guard is not compatible with other types of nozzles that I've tried. For example, the E3D nozzle too wide will not fit i could not get it to fit in this hole properly so this hole is basically sized perfectly for a uh, vanadium nozzle i maybe i had too much gunk or something but i could not get an e3d nozzle to uh, slide comfortably inside of that so um, that's just something to think about if you use uh, like a nozzle x or something um, but other than that uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Follow me on Twitter. If uh, you know you have any uh, questions, you can hit me up there, DM me there. But uh, anyways, uh, this is, uh, again, a hot end that Slice sent me for uh, uh, beta testing, not for review. Um, Slice is a great, great company, a great partner, made in the USA. And um, anyways, this is a great hot end. All the Slice products are great hot ends. Um, as is like Bontech, and you should always support the people that are creating these products, Bontech included, Slice included, um, and many others. You know, go to the original, and yeah, it's, this, is, this hot end's gonna cost you a little bit more, but you know what? You get the support, and you get the, the well-being, knowing that if something goes wrong with it, they usually take care of it. So anyways, this is me uh, signing off for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit like if you liked it. Leave comments below. Follow me on Twitter if you have any questions. And again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.